For the last year, the Defence Select Committee has been running an inquiry into the experiences of women in the military, from recruitment, transition, through to civilian life. And we wanted to look at the whole cycle of a military woman's career to work out what is going well and work out where the problems are so we can make recommendations to the MOD in order to promote the armed forces as a great career for women and to make sure our female veterans are having their needs met. Now this is the first inquiry of its kind into this subject and on this scale and Ben Wallace, the Secretary of State for Defence, gave us special permission for this inquiry to hear from serving women, something which is normally banned. Now we have heard from over 4,200 women and that's 9% of the female regular military population today. And women with a military background have finally been given a platform to have their voice heard. And today we launch our report, Women in the Armed Forces Protecting Those Who Protect Us. Now nine out of 10 women in our survey said that they would recommend a career in the military to any woman. But our inquiry concluded that when things go wrong, they go drastically wrong. And 62% said that while serving, they had experienced some form of abuse, ranging from bullying to serious sexual assault and rape. And six out of 10 don't report it to their chain of command for fear of the detrimental impact it will have on their careers. Now, women told us that the complaint system was re-traumatizing and the legacy of this experience followed them into civilian life. Now our evidence told us the military complaints process is a clear point of failure, with women being overrepresented in the complaint system year on year. Now, where the complaints process is concerned, there is clear evidence that the military is marking its own homework. Now our report recommends the following. The chain of command be removed from all complaints of a sexual nature. The establishment of some sort of central defence authority to oversee complaints involving bullying, harassment and discrimination. And that rape cases be heard in a civilian court rather than the military courts. Our report also highlights the inadequacies of equipment designated to women. For example, body armour and clothing designed to fit men and a lack of sanitary products whilst on deployment, all of which impact on operational effectiveness. And we are extremely grateful that the MOD have already made changes in some of these areas since our inquiry started. Now our report makes further recommendations covering a whole raft of areas, from family-friendly policies, the need for specialist female veteran services, upgraded military leadership training and the need to measure the success of initiatives and policy changes that the MOD have already introduced. And we expect the MOD to respond within eight weeks. Now, as a veteran, it has been my absolute honour to chair this much needed inquiry. And I'd like to extend my personal thanks and gratitude to all the women that have contributed. Your service has been valued and your voice has been heard.